Recently, a group of human rights researchers responding to letters from Fayette prisoners found a slew of environmental dangers and threats to the lives, health, and well-being of hundreds of prisoners, guards, and other staff members at the prison in western Pennsylvania. The Abolitionist Law Center and the Human Rights Coalition, with the help of the Center for Coldfield Justice, sent questionnaires into the prison and visited prisoners willing to talk. They found that the prison, built in the midst of a massive coal waste dump, filled to the brim with toxic fly ash, caused or was a significant contributor to nearly a dozen cancer deaths and serious life-threatening diseases and disorders. The Abolitionist Law Center and Human Rights Coalition investigated the claims, researched the science, and came up with a damning 25-page report. The report, entitled No Escape, Exposure to Toxic Coal Waste at State Correctional Institution Fayette, reads like a horror story of medical neglect, callousness, and human suffering. In addition to the 11 fatal cases of cancer, half a dozen others have been diagnosed with cancer, and dozens more are suffering from respiratory ailments, and 68% of respondents claimed undiagnosed ailments, including boils, cysts, and both internal and external swellings throughout their bodies. One Fayette prisoner, Marcus Santos, experienced swelling of his throat, on his face, arms, and legs. He was afraid he would choke to death. Santos wrote to investigators, I suffered almost every day of the 15 months I was at that prison. I almost died due to throat swelling several times, given Tums for throat swelling, and told that if I start choking, there's nothing that he can do for me. At that point, it became clear to me that I am being left for dead, with no other course to take or relief in sight. I called my brother and told him that I don't believe I'm going to make it through the rest of my time, and to please take care of my son. The ALC HRC report, No Escape, is full of such heartrending comments. The corporate here is a wide array of chemicals on the dump site, from the fly ash and coal waste, which includes mercury, lead, arsenic, hexavalent chromium, cadmium, boron, and thallium. The other culprit, the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections, which chose to build a prison in the midst of a toxic waste dump. In Pennsylvania, every prison sentence can be a death sentence. From Imprison Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Please hizzle. In the hizzle? <laughs> oh, I'm going to say it in the hizzle, but we're not inside the house. We outside. <laughs> we outside. <laughs> outside. Outside? Outside. outside? I don't know. Outside. Anyway, we're here today on location of our extended family member, uh, Brother Kevin. He <laughs> gave us his gracious home this weekend. So, uh... As y'all know, the last show we did uh, over by Yang's house, you know, we dealt with the, um, the the Panthers and the different factions of uh, uh, street tribes that came together. And so, uh, oh, basically, okay, can you hear me now? Okay, so um, here we're here today, and let me introduce to my right. Oh no, everybody introduce themselves. I got in trouble last time, but it's by Yanga. Yanga. What's good, Yang and Kruma. Uh, man, just shoot, J just Yanga, doing our thing, coming at you, the arena, like me, always got to send it out, check us out on YouTube, the arena, 2013, all one word, no spaces in between, uh, and that's it, glad to be back, and, and looking forward to a powerful show. Kevin Karen, I'm here with the George Peace and Justice Coalition, uh, glad to be here as usual, I'm going to talk about some, uh, some of what's going on in Africa today. Yeah. You know what, y'all share a mic, and we're going to share this one. We're going to have this one, and you have that one. Right. <laughs> Separation of <the> second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Gunner. I represent the uh, Atlanta Decatur New Black Panther Party. I'm a recruit for that chapter. I just want to talk about Ebola today and some of the beliefs I have on that, what they're trying to do with it. See, I should have brought my gavel. Mm. You must represent mm. your street tribe, too, there. I am a blood, mm. but I am a man first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 right. okay. Yeah. No, because I'm showing the importance of the, the unity that we have, right. you know what I'm saying? So, oh, I agree. You know, because 
you know, they giving out Nobel Peace Prizes to, you know, a president that can, you know, support Israel and bomb Gaza. I mean, mm -hmm. hell, we, we bring street tribes together. I think we right. deserve yeah, a something, something. Nobel Peace Prize for that. A free pizza or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like can we get that right? A Nobel Prize, I think we deserve justice. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, right. That's right. That's right. Okay, so, um, gentlemen, as residents of Atlanta, I just found out Thursday that Obama was mm. down here. And by the time I found out he was down here, he was flying back out. He mm -hmm. visited the CDC. Mm -hmm. what, what's going on? <laughs> uh, man, we're looking at, you know, we're talking about the Ebola, and we was having the, you know how we usually do with the pre-show warm-up and pre-show conversation and discussing with Kevin. And one of the things that I was expressing is, I think one of the reasons he came down here, I think that it's a lot worse then they want to let on. I don't think that they want to start a global scare. I think that we're getting past the point of uh, an epidemic, but that we're looking at the possibility of a pandemic. And I think that this is this is one of the reasons come down. And I think that he was looking at emergency plans and contingency plans and things of this nature. That's my belief. Yeah, because you, you speak too much truth. It's making too much sense. That's why I'm getting nervous yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think it's a lot worse. I think it's a lot worse uh, than, than they're letting us on. But we know one of their, their tactics is they will have us to be terrified of things that benefit them. You know, some of these things like, you know, some of these crises, maybe even possibly like the ISIS and things, these, these boogeymans to implement martial law. But things that are really serious, I, I don't think that they want to create a mass, you know, mass hysteria. Okay. I think that thing is they don't want the, the public to panic. I agree and I disagree. I okay. think it's not as serious as they're letting on. It's a scare tactic, just like with the black player back in the day. The only people that got the black player was the people that took the immunization shots. So at oh. the end of the day, I think it's, 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 it's a scare tactic and it may be an epidemic. Just like when they had SARS back in the day and all these scare tactics. SARS didn't go too far. You don't know nobody with SARS. You know what I mean? That's a good point. So at the end of the day, I think, yeah, it's still a scare tactic. Just like 9-11 and how you just said, they flew Obama here. He gave his speech. He flew him off. The same thing they did with the Bin Laden family. That same day when they had him over here, and they flew him right back over from here when there were no planes in the sky. So they're going to make certain things appear to be more than what it is to have us scared and adhere to their laws, which what they're trying to do now is inflict martial law. And once mm -hmm. they inflict martial law, we have no laws. If the military is, is, is over everything, which is what they're doing over in Iraq, which is what they're doing everywhere else, the military is going to be over everything here. We just haven't seen it yet. So that's what I think the end game is, wow. personally. Okay, yeah, uh, Kevin? Yeah, so I'll, I'll say this. Um, I was actually at work uh, last week when Obama made his big his big talk from CDC, which uh, kind of blew my mind. Like, oh, wow. I've never seen a president fly down to uh, go and talk about an epidemic in another part of the world right right, right. Have a lot of other things on your mind so I thought that was interesting and um, and what concerns me most is what he didn't say during that short speech at the right. Center for Disease mm -hmm. Control and that was you know he talked about we're gonna go and we're gonna provide stability a lot of the same stuff that you hear when you talk about right. providing uh, services to war zones where actually you're, you're beginning to start a mm -hmm. combat mission mm -hmm. um, and he didn't say in his in his speech. He didn't actually mention the three thousand troops, but on the White mm. House website that was that all came out later. And mm. and uh, he just talked about having the military provide all this tactical support and stuff. And so I think the question that we have to ask is is how are we really going to be dealing with this issue? So let's say that uh, we're well intentioned. Let's say let's pretend for okay, a second, right. which. Uh, you know, we Even though I thought we were supposed to like send that. doctors, not <laughs> troops. But okay, go ahead. Exactly. Okay, right. exactly. So, it, you know, if we're well-intentioned, um, we could do what Cuba is doing, uh, sending some of the finest medical professionals right. that they have, which mm. Cuba has an excellent medical uh, uh, mm. program for the entire country, socialized medicine that... Wait, uh, man, wait, wait, Gabby. He talking about that socialist. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> boy, that socialist. <laughs> boy, that, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, so Gabby. anyway... Um, but uh, instead, we are sending 3,000 troops. And this begs the question mm -hmm. uh, about like, some of these suspicions that a lot of people have about whether our martial law will be implemented, whether those troops are being sent to enforce quarantines. Right. Whether we're talking about just walling off uh, poor, sick people until they all die, and that's going to be how they mm -hmm. control the epidemic. Absolutely. That's, 
And that's what I think a lot of people are concerned about. Right, because you, you can't just talk people into a quarantine, right? Exactly. Yeah, you, you mind coming with me into this uh, sealed glass house here? Uh, right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. And then laying down, and I think that that's, that's, that's the whole point, Kevin, is one of the points we make. And, and go back to like what uh, Brother Gutter said. This is why one of the things that I think it is a lot more serious than they're letting on. We're sending 3,000, anywhere between 3,000 to 3,500 troops over here instead of 3,000 uh, medical uh, professions. I think that they're trying to contain it. I think that at this point in time that they, it is an epidemic and that the fear of it being pandemic really has them thinking about this. I think that we look at it in other countries that there have been other reports, and I should have did my research a little better. There have been other reports of um, Ebola, the Ebola flu in, in which which places were they? Oh, yeah, uh, and not just in Africa. Right. Not just some of these medical physicians, not in the United States, but in the, the other places are coming back and they have Ebola. And one of the things that I know at first they were saying that, and one of they're trying to keep on the down low now, but when I first, the very first time I heard about Ebola a long time ago, I heard that it was airborne. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now a lot of things, well, that's... I heard a, once a, a disease, any disease of any type gets airborne. Uh, no, not not every disease is airborne. You know, airborne. Once it gets airborne, airborne or it is killed. No, this this one they saying that if someone sneezes or if you get too close, that just being in the proximity of someone and inhaling, you can get this disease. Unlike you know HIV or something like that through the blood or through something like that. That just being an airborne thing. I think the troops coming in and the tactical and 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 uh, President Obama uh, implementing these tactical and these strategies. These wartime strategies on this place is letting us know that it is a lot more serious than, than they want the, the public to know and that it would be advantageous for the public to find out what's going on and start to prepare themselves for something like this. Can I say one thing? I, I feel like at the end of the day, you know, the diseases and everything that they put out, they have cures for. So it's not just mm. like a common cold. Mm -hmm. So what if, what if back in the day we thought the common cold was as ham as this was right now? Mm -hmm. It'd be compared to the same thing. They have the, the serums and, 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 and the things that will take the immune deficiencies out of our body. Mm -hmm. But they won't use them because, it's, it's like you said, it's capitalism. Mm -hmm. it, well, let's it, talk it, about the serum. Uh, the serum, okay. The first person that, that, that contracted it, they flew into Atlanta. Okay. It was a white man. They flew the serum in to save him. But it's a bunch of people in Africa that has the same disease that they won't save day to day. Mm -hmm. So this is done secretly. Right. So well, if they have if they have these things in place and they're not being utilized now to me, like we were just talking about, I feel like now it's a ploy and it's a plot. It's not about the disease anymore. It's about repopulation, re uh, uh, depopulation control at right. the end of the day. Trying mm -hmm. like like if I uh, uh, that was broke down in hidden colors to me. If I have a, a, a classroom of 31 students and I knock off, you know, 20 of 21 of those students, I just have 10. I can teach them more effectively. And having 31 students that have to, you know, mm -hmm. piece and piece. Yeah, then what I find odd is that, you know, you talk about a serum, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that that's for a cure. And then they said from the serum, we're going to do a treatment. I'm like, wait a minute. The treatment and the cure aren't the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not the same. Wait, break, break it down, Kevin. Sure. Right. Okay, so, I mean, I want you to feel free to attack it, anything that I say because I want to be able to, like, back it up. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so, with. And this is this is my understanding of the whole situation. When you have a virus in general, even the common cold, viruses do not have a cure. We, as the human species, we have never been able to we cure a right. virus. Okay. What we can do is we can develop vaccine. Vaccine mm -hmm. is kind of like uh, uh, you. It's it's a basically um, an injection of some kind. It has it causes your body to produce antibodies, which then right. can fight off uh, the virus. Um, before it's able to get into your body and actually infect you. So a vaccine is very different than a cure. Viruses are not themselves alive. This is um, actually a big debate in uh, the biology community about whether a Make virus right. is a living thing. They're not made of DNA. They're made of uh, RNA. And uh, what they do is they hijack your own body and they replic they use the machinery of your own cells well, in your body. some pieces of that disease right. to make you immune to it. Well, so yeah, so that's the way the vaccine works. The way a vaccine works is uh, it gives you bits and pieces of the disease, a weakened uh, virus. Like uh, okay. they basically break the virus down um, before, it, and so they can infect you, mm. but they give you pieces of it. And then uh, your body, your natural immune system actually, immune. yeah, builds up and can fight it off. 
So we don't have a cure. What we have is this strategy to get your body to fight it off. Mm. Now, mm. the treatment that um, the gentlemen, uh, the, the uh, white aid workers that were in um, West Africa and then flown out and taken to Emory, the treatment that they received was known as ZMAP. Mm. Uh, there have been no um, tests, and this is all, this is what's publicly available, okay. again, because I understand there's a lot of information that isn't being shared with everybody oh, about this. Yeah, and it's, and it's causing a lot of, uh, because of the lack of transparency, it's causing a lot of people to have legitimate suspicions, and for good right. reason, because mm -hmm. as we know, Plenty of diseases have been used to uh, test on people of color mm -hmm. in this country with the mm -hmm. Tuskegee experiment. Mm -hmm. um, in Latin America and Guatemala, recently the CDC had to apologize for doing another experiment. Didn't we just have to go in Syria? Yeah. Assad Bashad had them chemical weapons spot yes. day. <laughs> boy, I tell you, them terrorists, boy, they oh, always right. find new ways to terrorize people. Mm -hmm. God bless America. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the only clarification I want to make is that as far as what's openly available, I am not a aware of any cure for Ebola as a disease. Wait what a minute, oh, is, wait a minute, Kevin. You mean to tell me the guy here in Atlanta is not cured from Ebola? So he is, he's safe now. He's not sick anymore. When I say cure, what I mean is if you get strep throat, I can give you um, some antibiotics. You take those antibiotics, the disease dies. Uh, the, the streptococcus, the bacteria that are infecting you, they get killed by that disease and they die. Your body doesn't have to do anything. What happened to him is they took him into Emory Hospital, which they, this is not what they're doing with the people in Africa. They're not, they're not right. actually doing all these things that you would need to do to treat somebody if you wanted them to live. Mm -hmm. um, they took him in, they give him tons of fluids because they get dehydrated very quickly. Right. And uh, they give him tons of fluids and then they start to give him different types of antibodies to see if he can trigger, the, you, they can trigger the response in the body, the natural human response to fight off this disease. And that's what they were able to do over the course of uh, several weeks. They were able to give him enough nutrients so that his body, so he could stay alive and his body could naturally fight off the disease. Mm. And so that is not considered, that's considered a treatment in the same way that we were talking about um, um, uh, the, uh, the, the gentleman who had HIV. Um, Magic Johnson. Yeah, Magic Johnson. Um, Magic Johnson, when you have HIV, you get a cocktail of different uh, nutrients, different um, antibodies and things that cause your body to naturally fight off mm. uh, the virus right. by itself. But this is separate from a cure. A cure would be, I can give you something and it's gonna kill all the virus in your body and you'll be okay. We, okay. we do not currently have anything like that. So what we're working on, what they're working on at CDC and WHO and all these other medical places, is they're working on a vaccine the vaccine, like the smallpox vaccine, or um, uh, vaccine for polio. These are vaccines that you give to to healthy people, so that they can never contract the disease. Okay, but this is going in line with Yanga was saying. Why send? Why not send the Surgeon General down? Why send Bar Barack Obama? Is more like a, a general military type tactician. At the end of the day, is to make money. Just like the medicine business, just like the prison systems, everything is to make money. So why would I give you the cure to your disease when you're spending millions of dollars with my industry every year? If I give you that, I'm taking away my economic system. I'm every a, system is built up off of, uh, 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 of lies. I'm, I, I can agree, but if, you know, I think that one of the things, if, 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 to me, if that was the case, then you would see the president of corporation of, of Bear Aspirin or something. You wouldn't see the commander in chief, the leader of the, with the so-called free world, as they say. I think that one of the things that we have to look at is that he's coming down looking at a contingency plan. Should this thing go global? Should it go? Should it become a pandemic? What will our steps be? We didn't usually, when presidents come down, there's fanfare, there's all kind of announcements that he'll be there. He was in and out before we knew it. And like you said, when's the last time that we seen any president go to the CDC? Can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get deep into that. That's a good point. Let's get deep into that. Okay, what do we do? We got our Harvard students, all our Ivy League students that go over and study in Egypt under witch doctors and find out the real things that cure people. And they come over here and manipulate the medicines to build their medicine industry. At the end of the day, it's all flawed. So I'm not going to sit here and say that any business that we have in America can do any benefit for the people because it's just to mm -hmm. destroy our mm -hmm. people. And they didn't come down here to say, okay, we're going to help people and, and, and sanction them off to keep the disease from them. No, they're going to come down here to do that 
to put the disease on us and kill us off. But you know, I, and I'm gonna say they're not turning back and forth. Should that be the the only problem I have with that argument is if that was the case, then they would be they would make it worse than it would be. I mean, they would be absolutely sending you know pandemonium through the television it'd be like warning warning but i mean that's what i'm saying i mean if they were because the money's here in america they would they would they would scare us what they're trying to do they're being very calm they're being very nonchalant but the question is why send 3500 military you know what I'm saying? And it's to, it's to quarantine. It's to make sure that it doesn't spread throughout Africa, that some of those cats don't get on flights and get on boats and oh, get over here well, and fly over here and then create a pandemic. Well, okay. Why did they, in, in my hometown in Augusta, where none of that is going on, before it even happened, before the Ebola outbreak, they bought $3 million worth of army tanks. Like they're already gearing up before this, before it even happened. That's what I'm saying. But that's, that's in America. You're looking at, you're looking at, in in Africa, probably one of the poorest places in Africa. There is no economic advent is not economically advantageous for them to do that for the president to do that. If this is in the quarantine, like we said, it, yeah, it's martial law for someone. It's martial law for them. It's a quarantine for them. It's you around them. Before genetic annihilation, if they, if it's killing off me and you, mm -hmm. if you have sex with a white woman, then where's the money coming in at? At the end of the day. They're trying to kill all but black then, people. But that's what I'm telling you. Then where are they going to make their money at? See, that's why I say it can't be both things. It can't be genetic annihilation and at the same time a ploy for I economic... Feel, I feel, personally, this yeah. is a personal opinion. Just like Michael Jackson. He said, I couldn't come out here and tell y'all the truth until I had my money built up to the point to where it wouldn't affect me anymore if I did tell y'all the truth. I'm a, but, but, let me say one more thing, good, just my last yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And this is one thing, and this is no slight, but I think us as African people in America, we, we've been hurt so bad. That I think sometimes we read conspiracies into things that may be blatantly in front of our face, and it's gonna make us, it's gonna make us miss the boat. You know what I'm saying? I I, I can't understand why he would send 3,500 troops to quarantine. I mean, and you could be absolutely right, but I, you know, one of the things that when we just look at the movements, one of the things that when we look at America, America is a fascist country. It's it's, it's not just um, um, based on a race thing or this and that, because now they're dealing with classism. You know what I'm saying? We know we have black faces in white places. We got neo-colonialism going on like crazy here. These black men have went absolutely crazy in oppressing and repressing their own kind. Still an individual basis. Yeah. So one of the things is that when you look at they're going to look out, by being a fascist country, they're going to look out for their own. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he snuck down here, came in so clandestine in the, in the cover of darkness, went to the CDC. I mean, he didn't stop by Morehouse. You know what I'm saying? Usually he's making his rounds. He's not, you know, he didn't stop by the arena. No, but I mean, he, he when, yeah, that's what I'm saying. When he does, though, when he does come down here, there's fanfare. He's going to these places. He's making his rounds. Right, it's like holiday. President's in town. You know what I'm saying? This and that. He, he eased in. He went to the uh, Center for D Disease Control. He went to the CDC. He had that meeting. And he got up out of here, and even the information that's coming out of that meeting is so chopped up and so misconstrued that you, we, we still don't know what was said or what went down. Have we, has anybody here looked up anything dealing with the Denver airport conspiracy? And all the murals on their walls and, and, and some of the hepatitis and all the stuff they plan on spraying on our people at the end of the day. Like I said, I, I have researched on this a little bit, and I feel like depopulation control is their number one agenda. And well, it doesn't have anything to do with race at the end of the day. Well, let me let me let me chime in just real quick, cause I mean, when you say the military equipment, it's not always for us. You know, they had a stand down in Ferguson between the feds and the state. You know, the the, the state is being so armed to the T. They feel like you know what, man, give y'all the thing. We gonna be sovereign. In fact, we gonna succeed for the United States of America. We gonna be the United States of Texas. You know what I'm saying? So, Lone Star State. I, right, Lone Star State. So I don't think that's designed for us. Because all we will do is we shall overcome and we just pray and God will come save us. No, they gearing up against the people that are equally armed like them. So, like I said, I, I think that that's a fact. A lot of people don't know about the stand down between like the feds. They, they had to send Eric Holder down there. So, and another thing about a, and I'm, I'm going I'm to get to um, Kevin in a minute here. You can't control a, a, a pandemic. Right. You can't control a pandemic. A pandemic habit is wiping out everybody. A pen, you know, a virus don't be like, oh, well, you go, okay, you're black, he's white, I'm going to just... That black plague only affected the people that took the immunization shots. Right. It did not affect the people that did not take the immunization shots. Okay, Kevin, you bring us... 
<laughs> yeah, you, you, I'm, 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 you know, no, because everybody's making valid points. See, so I'm, I'm trying to, you know, and I understand motive because, like Angus said, man, black people, we've been done so wrong. So, mm-hmm. man, if, if a white person is wrong, we're like, oh, you're trying to shoot us, you know. Yeah. So it's like, so we have to, yeah. we have to kind of, kind of, kind of hear the facts and just kind of, I, I just want to kind of see, you know, well, I first learn wanna, some more yeah, about the actual virus. I want to clarify where where I'm coming from. I I did study uh, biology in school. Okay. I'm not like an, an expert or anything like that. So okay. I don't want you to think I'm trying to like pull that card or anything. Okay. Um, I do think like we should recognize now. Uh, not everyone. Let's say that the disease does spread, and let's say that it goes global in, in some way or another. Um, first of all, not everyone will die. Um, some people are naturally immune to this disease. Some people that's are naturally right. immune to any disease. That's right. And that's actually the case already. If someone, uh, so uh, the the white guy who uh, was at Emory Hospital, um, he since he now survived the disease, he's now immune for the next ten years. Oh wow! Um, until the level of antibodies in his body declines to a level where he can get sick again. Right. Um, when you receive a vaccine. Uh, that's the same case. You are arming your body so that your body can fight off the disease. So some people are naturally immune. Some people get the vaccine in order to get immune. So not everybody will die. Um, Now, a lot of people could die. Uh, This particular strain of Ebola, there's five different ones. This one is the most dangerous. It kills 50% to 90% of the people that it infects, which means there's a very low recovery rate and a very low natural immunization rate um and so what that means is that uh it will be it can spread and uh it can kill a lot of people but this disease right now it only spreads through contact between bodily fluids we're talking blood um we're talking breast milk okay. um and uh, the and sexual fluids uh, um okay and uh so how'd the doctor get it you can, so, you can get an std yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> well the doctors can get it you can get it through sweat Okay. Um, and, and things like that. So a lot of people okay. are getting it from cleaning cleaning bodies mm. or um, different things like that. Now, I also uh, want to, I, I know I have not read any reports or anything of the disease going airborne. And I think that uh, this concern, while it's a valid concern, um, it, I don't think there's any reason for us to be worried about it right now. Uh, a disease goes airborne because of it constantly mutates. So, like every year, we get a new, different flu vaccine, right? Right. We're getting a different flu vaccine because the flu virus changes, mm-hmm. and so the fact that it would change and suddenly go airborne is a very, uh, a, a very slight possibility. That could happen, but um, I have not seen anyone who's actually really concerned about that particular thing yet. Uh, if you did want to weaponize something and use it to kill off a lot of people, that is something that you would want to do, and right. there may be ways to do that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't, I don't necessarily, in my opinion, uh, think that this was an intentional thing. Could there have been some, some things going on? I, I don't know, because I don't, I don't know what happened originally. The original report is that there was a young boy in Guinea who got sick. His mother and his aunt got sick. They traveled. Um, and got more people sick, and so it is going up exponentially, and that's the scary thing about the disease in general. Wait, but this, but this is not the first time Africa has seen a bolide. True. Yeah, so 1976 what, was. So what happened to the first wave? Mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to. Google. Yeah, I'm trying to. What, what happened to the first wave of the Ebola? You know? They cured them over here. Why couldn't they cure them over there? Why did they have to bring them over here to cure? Them? Mm. Well, I want to know what what was what, what, what I want to know what what was the. Uh, how did they stop the? What, what happened to the first wave? Because I remember hearing about another wave. Actually, there was there was three waves. This is the third or fourth wave. I, I don't I don't know if this answers the question. You tapped on being immune to something without even having the vaccine. Mm-hmm, to it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people I know have never taken the medicine or immunization their whole life and never been sick. So at the end of the day, is it the medicines that we take? You know, is you know it, is it show, you know, the, the things that we eat, <laughs> our sure. proper intake? Mm-hmm. Because when you go to the hospital, what they tell you? Proper rest, proper fluids, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, is it what we're intaking that's, that's giving us, you know, more sicknesses? I'm not just talking about Ebola, period. It's, you know what I mean? Is that a point? I, no, I, th- I, I definitely think that's, that's a, a, a point. I think that there are different things, different steps we can take. Now, I also do believe, I mean, I have the smallpox vaccination. I used to work in a lab with a virus similar to it, 
and if I were to get, you know, that virus in my eye anyway, I would lose my eye, anything like that. Now, I, because I got the vaccine, um, I, I do believe that that yeah, protects me. Now, does that mean that there aren't problems with vaccines sometimes? I'm not saying that, you know? I, I think there's rightful suspicion, especially when you treat certain populations differently and do experiments on them. I think there's rightful suspicion as to uh, whether this is healthy or not. Right. But I will say that the wealthiest people in the world, they're getting vaccines too, and they're getting them because they know that it's gonna keep, uh, it's gonna keep them safe at times. Uh, but I'm open to people responding to that. Yeah, I just have a couple of comments I'd like to make. I'm Chima Ott, and I'm a health and wellness advocate. And I just wanted to speak a little bit about vaccines and vaccinations, because I'm not an advocate of taking any types of vaccinations. Um, you know, I would caution our audience to really look up the ingredients about what are in some of these vaccinations, look at the ingredients, and also um, why would I want to take in a disease that I'm trying to get rid of by taking a vaccine with it. My way of healing, because I don't really believe in cure, I believe in healing, I believe the body can heal itself, I've done it myself, I've written a book about it, but uh, my uh, way of healing is to build up your immune system yourself by using nature, by using the food, by using the water, by using the air, by using the sun, by using the earth, using your natural ability within yourself and with on the planet to build up your own immune system in order to heal yourself. And the higher your immunity, the less able you are to able to get a lot of these illnesses and diseases like Ebola and, and, and all these other illnesses that they have out here. If your immune system is raised, then you will be healthy. I don't believe in taking vaccines. I believe in healing yourself with food and with nature. May I respond to that? You may. Yeah. You may yes. Okay, okay. Um, I, uh, I, so the only thing that I want to say is, um, and, and I respect every bit of what you are saying mm -hmm. because I completely agree and actually I should eat much healthier myself because I, I, I do not always. <laughs> um, now, now with that said, I think that, um, I think that, so the first vaccine in history was Dr. Edward Jenner. He made this vaccine for smallpox. Mm -hmm. The way that he was able to, to cure smallpox was he was able to infect people with the cowpox uh, virus, which is a similar virus. Those people would then get sick, and then they would heal from that virus because the body can fight off that virus. It's not as dangerous as smallpox, which pretty much kills you no matter what. Now, the way that Edward Jenner did this, no one talks about. Uh, the way that he did this was he got a bunch of uh, poor children together because um, he had a theory that uh, the kids who went and milked the cows didn't seem to be dying from smallpox. And so he tested his theory by getting these poor children together and infecting them, actually injecting them with cowpox and then waiting late and then infecting them later with smallpox once they recovered to see if they would stay alive. I do not advocate that type of experimentation. I think that that's a horrible uh, genocidal uh, type of practice. And yeah, and, and, and people, you know, people talk today about what a great thing it was that he figured that out because a lot of lives were saved by using that technique to stop the spread of the smallpox virus. Um, but at what cost? At the cost of experimenting on poor, underprivileged, marginalized populations. And so that's why I believe that there is a lot of skepticism, rightfully so, mm -hmm. because the people who are being experimented on are not the ones benefiting from some of this, some of this uh, technology. Absolutely. When it went into going, and this goes to Chi and, and basically Kevin. Have you ever heard of the uh, Wolf of Chernobyl? I have not. No. Okay. No. It's a documentary called The Wolf of Chernobyl. Now, what Chi is saying and what you were saying they're both correct because Chernobyl, y'all know what happened in Chernobyl. Right. Well, uh, there's a reason that we call wolves in Chernobyl and all the wildlife and all the wolves and everything in Chernobyl is immune to radiation. Mm. They, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a certain technology. Now, again, I want to reinforce that this does not justify the type of experimentation and horrible things done to people of color, color especially because, and, and this is rarely talked about, modern medicine as we know it uh, was advanced on the bodies of black and brown people mm -hmm. uh, during slavery and things like that. A lot of these big medical schools, Harvard, um, so, uh, uh, trying to think of the other ones, um, some of the best medical schools in our country uh, first used uh, slaves to experiment on and, and uh, that is a horrible, horrible thing that I think has, has led to some healthy skepticism about some of the medical advances that we have. But um, I would love to hear uh, more about other people's thoughts. In dealing with that, I don't, just just like you were saying, you're only going to get, I'm not tearing you down. Yeah, no, go you're for it. You're only going to get the information <laughs> that you receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of information, just like you said, you won't have the answer to because it goes above your grade. It's true. So at the end of the day, it's a lot of shit going on with the medical industry, you know, as far as killing people. And, I, and it's not done, uh, you know, I'm not talking about race. I'm just talking about period. Just like you're dealing with insurance companies and stuff and you're not having enough money to pay for your HMO and this and that. They're going to let you die at the end of the day. It's mm -hmm. a medicine business. Mm -hmm. So I just look at it like every other business. Either you're going to take my money, I'm not going to deal with you. Mm -hmm. So I just choose not to deal with that business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a question. What if you haven't never been with flu, cold, That's me. Chicken pox, small pox, what if you haven't never been killed to that? So how do you go about the vaccine and the Ebola now? Like, I've never been the chicken pox. I never had that as a kid, never grew up with it. The small pox, never even thought about it. The measles, the mumps, never had it. So how do you go about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, so uh, I guess I guess I was fine. So you may have a natural natural immunization to chicken pox, for example. So that's that's one virus that we could talk about. Um, I had chicken pox when I was younger. I will never get chicken pox chicken pox again because I had a severe case. So my body built up resistance against that and uh, now protects me from it. Um, I'm not, to my knowledge, we don't have, there is no vaccine for chicken pox, but since you haven't been infected, if it is possible for you to get infected, you could get infected uh, with chicken pox now. And there would be, you know, there are ways to test this in a lab, but uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going and exposing yourself right. to chicken pox uh, to uh, see. Yeah. Like, well, I have not yeah. seen a case of chicken pox in a long, I don't know, I just, Ain't no nobody around me. They right. got really? Right. That's how kids and everywhere. I ain't me. I ain't okay. seen in a minute. I'm just thinking about the conversation we have and mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. One of my friends had chicken pox a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> my friend Dawn, who's on the show before. <laughs> well, I, I just like to say that, um, you know, and I don't want to date myself, but, you know, several years back, uh, when I was working for International Airline, um, I actually got chicken pox from a child that I escorted through immigration. So, um, and you know, it, it, it's my, my own theory, I would guess you would say, on how I got chicken pox was because my immune system was low. You know, I was working um, 10, 12, 14 hour days, six, seven days a week, every day, 30, 40 days in a row. Um, eating airport food, you know, not getting my proper rest, jump, jumping up, making overtime. So, you know, a child came through and we escort, you know, children through to come off the flight. I had gotten the chicken pox as an adult and one of the immigration agents actually also got chicken pox. Mm. So, um, chicken pox were, is, is, is not gone as far as, you know, out of society. Um, you know, I, I got it as an adult. Um, but that goes back to also what I said earlier about building up your immune system. And his brother was saying that, you know, he never had any of those things. And it's probably because his immune system is high. He's built up his immune system. He probably, you know, gets enough rest at night. You know, when the body heals, the body heals at night. Um, he probably gets enough sunlight. He probably doesn't stress himself about certain things. And, you know, he probably eats pretty good, you know. Um, I, I can't tell, but, I mean, he looks pretty healthy to me standing over there. You know, he, he got a smile on his face. And, you know, he, hey, he's happy, right? You know, he's happy. So, you know, uh, you know, and your body can take some assault 
whenever your immune system is high. So, um, you know, I, I think that, that that's the key point that I want to make is, you yeah. know, to build up your immune system um, for, from these things, from all of these illnesses. Build up your immune, immune system. system. And I agree with that. I, I want to, I you know, jump on that because one of the things that I do agree with, you, even though I don't do everything that I should do mm -hmm. as eating healthy, I do believe that uh, people, um, uh, you know, especially when you're from a certain geographical location, then certain your, your genetics are made up of that. I do think that being over here in America, being a people from Africa and brought over here, that these foods that we were used to, a certain African food, a certain way of eating, and then when we started eating foods that are genetically designed, not even just genetically designed, aren't, weren't, aren't from our native land. They're foreign foods, you know, so that it, they, our bodies react a different way. And it goes back to that immune system. You find the people that go back to a natural understanding and that eat naturally, and especially those foods that were um, familiar to them, you know, through uh, uh, heredity, through heritage and things of that nature, you do find them living longer. I mean, you can even look at the Asian people, man. They live for a nice long time and healthy things on diet that are on a diet that is a hereditary diet. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the people that you find that come over here, their diet is a hereditary diet. And you find the African and brother and sister here in America, we don't have that. And I think that we start right. And we adapt other diets and I, you know, where we don't have a diet at all. We just, you know, we just consume. We don't, like I said before on one show, we don't even eat, you know, we don't even eat to live. We always, now we're on some thing I have a taste for. You remember you used to eat when you were hungry? Now we say, I got a taste for some chicken. We eat for taste. I got a taste for a burger. I got a taste for this taste for that. We don't even eat to sustain us. We eat to uh, gratify our taste buds. So now we've just, we, it's just overconsumption and overindulgence in our lifestyle. Since we're over here in a land that promotes overconsumption and overindulgence, our lifestyle, we have adapted that and, our li and it's starting to be reflective in our health. So it is one of the things that she goes back to. And it goes back to this. But I still say, at the end of the day, it's a cover up. You know what I'm saying? It is a cover-up. I think that, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want this thing to spread about this Ebola thing. I think that it's bigger than they're letting on. You know, and this is just my opinion. It's just the people, you know, I'm from the street, so when you move funny, something funny's going on. My question is why, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my question is, Yang, is why yeah. would they not want it to spread? Why wouldn't they want it to spread? Because when it, because it's not, see, if I, I feel like that if it was something that they wanted, they would have a handle on it. But since it isn't something that they have anticipated, since it isn't something that they've masterminded, they don't want it to get out of control. You know what I'm saying? Maybe once they quarantine and contain it, they're, I mean, 3,500 troops for what? 3,500 troops for what? It means that if you cross that border, we have orders to shoot to kill. Uh, maybe that means this might be a plot employed to the new world? I mean, it, it possibly could be, but you know me, I, I, I get a little bit into that, but I'm not the, the overall big, big, big conspiracy theories, name man, because everything could be a conspiracy. Well, I mean, saying at the end of the day, they signed in, in, in bills and laws that eradicate Patriot Act and martial law. Yeah, but I mean, that's why, that's why you would want it to get out of hand. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't do the opposite. You would want, you would want. I agree with you. Yeah, you would want. They're playing it out, it makes it look like they're really worried about this shit. Yeah, I, I, I think, like I don't even think that they want us to think that, what they're, how they're playing it out is like they're not worried about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're acting, they're pretending like it's nothing. That's, that's why you say the misinformation we get on here, oh, oh, we brought the guy back to Emory, and we have this, everything's under control, and this and that. But there's key words that they're shooting out, but we're sending 3,500 troops over. So there's certain things that they're doing that, like I said, you know, people, when you know, we from the streets, man. If you're moving funny, you're moving funny. So one of the things that I think that they're trying to do is play it like it's everything's cool, you know, mommy gets on there cool, composed, you know our brothers are we smooth talkers anyway, so he gets on there, he's, he's calm, composed and everything like that, but I think that they're a little more concerned than they're letting on because if it gets out of hand, first of all what is the cost to make the serum? What is the cost of the treatment? You know what I'm saying? I mean, we have to look at, you're dealing with a capitalistic society, so at the end game, the end game is about some type of money. So even if it's nothing but to cut down the cost of serum and treatment, you I know what I'm saying? Because I don't think it's even about money. They don't, they don't care about money, and it don't cost nothing because they're the ones making the money. No, it costs. It's going to cost them something. It's going to cost them something because even money, even if it's not, we're not even talking about paper money, we're talking about time, labor, resources, everything, nothing in the world is free. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you, you, I know you went to college, I went to college as well. So going to college, a lot of these colleges hold some of these diseases that we're talking about in the laboratories and stuff like that. So I think at the end of the day, it's all a plan of game. 
opinion. Mm -hmm. I said mm -hmm. this is a fact. Mm -hmm. It's an opinion. They have all this shit there that they play with and study all day, every day. They figured out a lot of the stuff that they don't put out until years later that they figured that shit out. For sure. So I'm not understanding that medical industry. Why, 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 because they already done build up all their resources. They don't even need our money no more. We just think they need our money. Their resources are built and been built. They already got all kind of underground tunnels and stuff of, of plenty of the resources they need, that they need if something goes down. Just like Noah's Ark and that story. They got that in play if they need it. We look at all these movies and these movies are telling us exactly what they're trying to do. But we don't look at them and we don't study them. So we don't see what they're trying to do. So what's the the bird flu? I mean, that's a, I don't even think it's as big as it was. Like it came out real big and then it died off. Like, I don't hear any like cases of that yet. I haven't heard anything on the news lately about a bird flu or SARS or any of those diseases that they said was going to kill everybody else. Yeah, I have a I have a question for Kevin or for anyone else on the panel. If anyone's ever heard of the, the Georgia Guidestones? Have you heard of the Georgia Guidestones? Okay, as I, I don't have the uh, full information in front of me, and I'm sure the audience can look that up as well. And it speaks something about what you're saying about the uh, population control, about how they want to get the population down to a certain number of people. 500 million. 500 million. And it's written on the Georgia Guidestones. Mm -hmm. And um, Is that about 700 million now? Okay, I don't know all the numbers, but I know that these Georgia Guidestones were, were put in place, I don't know how long ago, and, um, you know, and I always implore the audience to look up all this information themselves and not just take our word for it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if, if the fact is, in fact, that they are trying to do population, population control, it seems to me that um, most of all of what we talk about is all about control. So this, this number of troops that they're, they're bringing here, or that they have here, it, it seems to me that it will be about some type of control, whether or not it's um, to kill off people, like you say, or make people sick or you know what have you it, it seems to me that it would be about some type of control because that's what a, a lot of this seems to be about